my son being born was was the best feeling I ever had. Better than winning any belt. It was just to see him born was was amazing. So I had like a renewed sort of passion. I thought this everything I do now is f f f for my family. So I went into training for the fight. I got the phone call off, off uh, Barry Earn saying they've made you mandatory for the fight. Do you want the fight? I said, without a doubt, definitely I want the fight. There was no other fight I wanted except Michael Jones. So I start training camp 12 weeks before the fight. And then the week after I get a phone call from my mum saying your nana's had a heart attack and she's been took into hospital. And unfortunately, two days before the fight, the day before the weigh-in, I got a phone call from my mum just saying, um, you better come to the hospital, she's not gonna make it. Not gonna make it through the night. I could hear the crowd was starting to get noisy. It was probably about 30 minutes before the fight and I'd been warming up for a little while and you know, every boxer will tell you, sometimes you can get too deep into your own mind and you let your thoughts run away with you. And uh, I was just thinking to myself, I can't do this, I can't do it. I had a little bit of a meltdown, to be honest. I just heard someone say, I hope you're not bottling it for the use of a better word. And uh, I looked up and it was Ricky. I sort of stood up and, and gave him a hug and, and then it was weird, everything just went away again. And he went, listen, come on, you, you've, got the, you've got this kid's number. Don't let your mind run away with you, you can, you can win this. But he said, listen, forget about your nana. Just try and forget about it, think about boxing. So I said, right, okay. And that was it, all those negative thoughts went out of my mind and I was back on it, I was back focused and, and ready, to, ready to do the job. I was just so focused and determined to beat him. I knew that this was it because I felt if I didn't win that fight, my career was over. I couldn't wait to get back in that ring and be stood facing him and for the rest to say, let's do it. I couldn't wait for that moment. And all the nerves and tension, everything goes, the butterflies, and it's just, this is it now, this is my time. Second up, Rojo. between the two, another rematch, and what now? Moore starts a seven to two on favourite to win the Lonsdale belt outright. I'd not boxed for six months, and it, obviously my timing was out. He knew I was coming for him. I, he, I think he could tell by my demeanour. Once you get into the fight, you know you're there. I was probably a bit too confident because I, I went back out for the third round, I sort of, you know, got in there, cut him, cut, I hurt him badly, and uh, I thought, I've got him here. Oh, that's a good left hook! John, no, that's gone! Beautiful shot from Michael Jones, and Jamie Moore is floored. Sensational fashion. I didn't see it coming. Um, I was throwing a left uppercut, and the momentum of my shot, coupled with the, the power of his shot, put me on the ground, and uh, I, that was the start of me being, being in a lot of trouble. My bum slipped through the bottom rope and as it slipped through I put my arms out to, to, to steady myself and he, he hit me in the back of the head and when I went down I, I, it really disorientated me, the, the, the shot to the back of the head. I was just thinking just weather the storm and try and get through it. Clean shot from Jones and Michael Jones on the verge here, on the very edge of the win of his career. So he piled the pressure on and he threw so many shots. I could feel the gas coming out of him. I remember rolling on the rocks and I remember thinking, as soon as you stop punching now, you're getting one. And now, Michael Jones has to take clean shots. See, Moore has his balance back, so now the power is back in his punches again. What a round this is! All of a sudden, the tables were turned. It was my fight to lose, then I was back in charge and I had him out on his feet by, by the end of that round. I sat on the stool and Oliver's telling me, you know, take deep breaths and stuff like that and, you know, relax. And I'm trying, I'm trying to just get my breath back, really. Give me some deep breaths. Leave him alone, leave him alone. Look at me. And he says, look at me. Don't you dare do that again. And he says, don't you dare do that again. And I thought, 
I didn't know whether he meant get knocked down. I thought, I, I was thinking I didn't do it on purpose. I didn't mean to get knocked down. A lot of stuff had gone on before and, you know, my nana had passed two days before and, you know, I had to sit there and watch her die. I had a, a newborn son, a five-week-old son, and, you know, I was coming off back-to-back -back losses. I thought, I've got to win this fight. I jumped on him because I, sort of, I seen in his face it had hurt him and I, re I rushed in and I hit him with a, a, a left uppercut and a right hook and then a chopping little left hook he decided to go down. two days ago on, uh, on Wednesday and we're a very close family, big Irish family and um, she shouted down to me, she said keep going son and uh, you know I done it stuck in there and that was for my baby Micah and my nana who died on Wednesday. The mixture of um, joy and relief at the same time because of everything that had happened, all those things added together made that for me the, the greatest feeling I ever had as a boxer to, to win that fight.